Let's get all extra, extra, blah, blah, blah. let's just get feel fancy and say like, what is success actually to you? You know, because when we're talking about a successful business, what does that, what does that actually mean? You know, let's get all, you could it be financial? Yeah, I made a bunch of money. Or it could it be like, oh, you know, everybody knows me as the pet sitter locally. Yeah, that could be it too. I'm super uncomfortable. I'm going to move. Give me a second. Ah, okay. Okay, so ultimately, what is success in the pet sitting industry? My name is Amber Van Denzen, owner and founder of Attaboy Animal Care, located in Central Florida, certified professional pet sitter, veterinary nurse of 13 years, bachelor's of animal science. I mean, you could call those successes, right? Like, I mean, they are, but to me, they're just titles at this point to show that I'm successful, potentially, or show off. I don't know. Depends on who you are and what you like and what you don't like about people. But ultimately, when we're talking about success of a pet sitting business, there's a couple of of things on how to become successful is what I'd rather talk about and like what your main goals are that make you feel successful in your business and what success means to you. And that sounds cheesy as fuck, but I mean, that's what it is, right? So to me, I started this business because I was a veterinary nurse of 13 years. I did nights, weekends, and holidays as far as I could remember. I saved lives, like I literally saved lives and that was successful to me, but at the same time, the burnout was just extreme. I was wanting to have human children soon at that time and I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be able to be there and not pay someone to take care of my kiddos and then work more to pay more people to do everyday stuff like cooking, cleaning, housework, etc. because ultimately I was working for other people to work for me to do basic care. So to me, success is this balance of I can complete the tasks that I want to complete on my own, or I have the option of paying others to complete those tasks for me based off of what I prefer to use my time for. And I wanted to raise my kiddos. So to me, that was success. And I wanted to travel and I wanted to be self-employed because I didn't want somebody to tell me necessarily how to work, even though, I mean, realistically, when you work with clients, clients are kind of telling you what to do, right? You know. <laughs> uh, but to me, when I look at my business, to me, success is, I get to pick my kids up from school. I get to make them dinner or take them out if I wanted to, to eat. Um, if somebody, I wanted somebody else to cook for us essentially that day. I get to be at every play and activity and picnic. I get to go on little weekends away or staycations or KOA weekends camping at the cabins when we want to um, for the majority of the time, right? And then don't get me wrong, there are a handful of trips that have totally been miserable and ruined because of the business as well. And we're trying to avoid those as much as possible. And of course, bringing finances and financial money to our household and personal lifestyles for retirement, if that's for early retirement or to be stable for when we do wanna retire etc. Others is they want their spouse to work with their company. Others, they never want to have a normal nine to five. Others, they want this to be a streamlined business that self functions so they can do other activities or start other businesses or go back um, to school to do other things. It really just depends ultimately on who you are and what your personal goals are. Um, so my goals were those and to me, my business is successful because we've hit those things, um, which makes me happy most of the days. I mean, we all cry occasionally, right? Like you cry, right? Like, <laughs> cause I totally cry. <laughs> um, crying's good for your health though, let's be honest. So do we have anxious and anxiety and stress and overwhelmness and say, fuck this shit, I'm done multiple times? Probably, yeah. Yeah, we all have, I would imagine if we're being honest with ourselves, um, but at the same time, that's what success is for me. So how did we get here? How did we get to be in a successful area that that's where what it's doing. Um, and it comes down to policies, it comes down to training, it comes down to protocols, it comes down to streamlining those protocols, and it comes down to know when to say no five things to make me successful in a pet sitting industry. That's what I know. First of all, <clears throat> let's talk about training. I feel anybody that's gonna be taking care of pets can't just be the pet lover, but needs to be the pet professional. And they need to have some kind of animal behaviors and health training, whether that's from they worked in the veterinary field or they went to like a college to do those things, or they learned on the job from other persons that have been in it for a while, or they use third party companies of professionals that professionals created to get that knowledge. You should always be educated in the industry that you're working in. You wouldn't want somebody, you know, 
as a doctor who doesn't know jack shit about your body, right? So same goes with caring for animals. And yes, anybody can fill a bowl, but does everybody know what bloat and GDV are? Uh, does, can anybody walk a dog, but can tell what heat exhaustion is for, or for a brachycephalic pet? Do you even know what a brachycephalic pet is? If not, Google those things. Um, the second thing comes down to policies. You need to know how you want your business to run and sometimes you don't know those answers and you learn through the years and you add more policies. I, I swear we add new policies every year because uh, you're like, did I really have to make a rule for that? Apparently so. <laughs> um, policies, how you learn that, professional organizations that give you some hints, other pet sitters or other pet companies, and then your personal opinions on things. And based off of that, education and training that you already had. So create those policies, showcase them on your website, showcase them to all your new clients, and do not be lenient on them as much as possible. Of course, human shit happens, but ultimately, if you say you're not taking aggressive pets and somebody comes in and they're like, well, Fluffy gets, once Fluffy gets to know you, he's not aggressive. No, fuck that shit. Say no, that dog needs to go to a dog trainer, not you, okay? Um, or you say hard leashes only, no retractable leashes, and then the pet client shows up and that's all there is is a retractable leash. You sure as shit use your own leash and you tell them, in the future, we will not service you unless you can show us that there's proof that you have a four to six foot solid leash made of fabric or leather. End of story. If the client doesn't pay you before your first service, you don't show up to that service until they pay you. Like that is how that works. It's solid, it hurts, they're gonna call you mean names, but ultimately you have your policies to stand behind. The next thing is protocols. So all every time you do a service, whether it's for client A or client B, if it's a similar scenario, it should have a similar experience and have similar outcomes. All the clients should get updates. All the clients should get updates within a certain time. All the client updates should have at least one to two photos per pet. All the client updates should have three to five sentences. All the visits should be at XYZ time or within these windows or this certain time. You need to create those protocols so every client has a similar positive experience, especially if you're doing a team-based employee or whatever approach. So you can have the same experience across the board, no matter what sitter they get, so you can avoid having favorites as much as possible. On those policies and protocols, you should be streamlining anything and everything that you possibly can. What does streamlining mean, does that mean? That means you're using softwares, systems, apps, or you know uh, processes to make sure that there's less human needs and human work involved before you get to a certain point that humans need to be involved. What does that look like for us at Attaboy? That looks like clients have, um, they can go to our website and they can see their step-by-step -step instructions on how to onboard with us, and it puts it in their hands not ours. We are selling to them with our websites, our trainings, our education, our, you know, open information. And then at that point, if they want to be part of us, they now need to do some work as well. And what that means is they have to fill out an online account in full. They have to email us to ask us for X, um, two to three uh, consultation dates. They have to fill out their rabies information and upload it, not us call their vet clinic. They have to have all those accessories ready. That email then that they, when they register on that client account, resends all those informations as well. We have a video walkthrough and a written walkthrough depending on each person's learning style. So again, streamlined process. They can access that CMS 24 seven whenever they want. They can email us whenever they want. We won't necessarily respond until it's a business hour, of course. And then that software keeps all that and we have access to email. It pulls reports when rabies vaccines are due. We don't have to manually look for them. It pulls birthday dates so we can send emails for pets birthdays if we want to. And then behind the scenes, it keeps our employee information on track as well. So we know when client sitters are due for certain things or if we need to keep track of not so great scenarios or keep track of great scenarios all streamlined processes. Uh, this could be your contact form on your website sending an automatic response. This could be your text messaging software sending an automatic response. This could be your voicemail telling them exactly step by step where to find that information. Streamline, streamline, streamline as much as possible. The last thing and the most important thing and the hardest thing, let's not lie to ourselves, is when to say no. 
let's remember there are so many pets out there and pet households and not every client is for us and we are not for every client and that comes down to your hard stops going back to those policies and protocols that you have um, if my client if a potential client refuses to fill out the online client system because either they're not able to uh, due to personal reasons or mental reasons or age bracket reasons they're not the right client for us. If they are not willing to get their pet uh, rabies vaccine tighter or an exemption letter, they're not the right client for us. If those clients have aggression, or pets have, or the clients too have aggression tendencies, but if the pets have aggression tendencies, those are not the clients for us. If they refuse to get those leashes and not follow those processes, those are not the clients for us. If they're just mean or treat us like inhuman or treat us as a lower standard like we're a subservient situation those clients aren't for us we use all of our clients first names specifically for that we don't say mr or mrs we call them by their first names nancy bob sarah jane whoever that's their name and that's our name as well we are equal ground we are adults so <laughs> we will treat you with your kindness and humility but we are professionals and just because of that i don't ask them to call me by a certain title i ask them to call me by my first human name and that's what we will do for them as well so we say no and we say no fairly frequently we will tell them if this is not a good fit for them and we've kind of seen that through the years and if you're curious about what our hard stops are or maybe what hard stops are for you or should be feel free and we can make a potential video about that in the future um, but we have a handful that we've learned through the years working in the veterinary industry and working in the pet care industry on what are some red flags and yellow flags for when we say no to clients <laughs> okay and those should you should have those too whether it's the area say you say well i only cover a five mile radius from this address and they're 5.5 do you say no you should say no because you've made that five mile radius for a reason, right? If you say that you do windows of arrival and they insist you arrive at a certain time, say no because you made those windows of arrival for a reason. Trust your gut. If you get a bad vibe as well, go for it. And sometimes you can just say, we're not a good fit for you, or we're unable to meet the needs of care that you have. And that's okay. Will they get pissed off? Yes. How to avoid that pissed offness? Offer them alternatives in a kind way as much as possible, as long as they're still being kind to you, of course, because I will meet and I will exceed their vibe. So if they're being a jackass, I will be a jackass a bit back potentially too, in the nicest way possible, usually very passive aggressively, <laughs> okay? Um, but I usually provide alternative pet care options, pet sitting facilities or persons, dog boarding facilities and dog train board and train all that fun stuff based off of their needs um and hope that i that they can find the best fit for them i tend to message those companies as well to let them know i'm referring them and any potential concerns or positives that may be beneficial for their company to know as well so how to be a successful one know what your success goals are and what success means to you two create policies do the training, create protocols, streamline your processes, and know when to say no, guys. I'm curious to know what your hard stops are, if you have any, or what's a policy that totally game changed for your company as well. I look forward to talking to you soon. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away. Another major part of success is how you showcase your company, and we're going to have a whole concept on that soon, too. Look forward to talking to you soon. Bye, guys. And remember, happy pets, happy people. Bye-bye.